the last leg of Educator.com's reading comprehension course. In these last couple lessons, I'm going to help you not panic when you're doing a standardized test. What I mean by standardized tests are tests like the KC, the ACT, or the SAT, or any of those entrance exams that get really, really scary. You need to understand that this is an introduction to understanding these tests. I don't intend to give, cover everything here, but I am hoping that I will point you in the right direction so that you'll be able to know what to look for when you do study this in more depth. Lesson overview will be this. What do you do before you take a standardized test? Now, when I say before, I don't mean the night before, the week before. I mean months before or even years before you take one of those scary standardized tests to either leave high school or get into college. Finally, since it's your best study aid or your worst enemy, caffeine will be covered just a little bit here. And finally, I'll give you some general overview tips for taking any standardized test when it comes to reading. So, what will you be tested on on a standardized test? Well, when it comes to reading, they're going to be testing for a couple things. They want to know how quickly can this student read? More importantly, how perceptively can this student read? Well, you can bet that your skimming skills are going to be very, very important here because that is going to help you read quickly. And the skimming skills will also help you read perceptively because you'll be able to pull out important words and important concepts really, really quickly. They're also going to test you on the strength of your vocabulary. They want to know that you can understand those $5 or $10 words very quickly so that when you're reading difficult material, you don't get stumped and stare at a word you don't know for hours and hours and hours. They're going to test also the very basics of your critical thinking ability. And again, critical thinking is like working out a muscle in your brain. It takes time to get that going. It takes a lot of practice. But they'll also test you on that. One, two, three, four things are going to be testing on you when it's reading time. So ask yourself, can all this be learned in two weeks? Well, the answer is obviously not. So what do you do long before the test? Well, first off, please make sure you're reading on a regular basis. At Educator.com, I provided a reading list of just nonfiction books that you can read just for your own enjoyment and to keep you reading on a regular basis. This is going to help you with that standardized test. I realize a lot of you are probably already doing this, and I think that's great. Keep it up. This is what's going to count for the most when you take those standardized tests later on. Also, when you're reading, you may have heard that what you need to do is lock yourself in a Spartan study room with no windows and nothing on to distract you and to stay in that place the entire time you're reading. This is actually not the best way to do it for most people. I recommend that when you're reading anything, you take that book with you and you move around from place to place in your house or you move to a park or you go to a library or you go to a cafe or you just move around as you're reading and you don't always sit in the same room doing the same reading all the time. Very important that you find a place that's stimulating but not distracting. And what I mean by that is an environment that might be stimulating but not distracting could be something like a library with your headphones on. Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on in a library, but it's not like you're going to a rock concert where everything is going to be so loud and so distracting that you won't be able to get any reading done. So try to find an environment that's stimulating where there's, you know, maybe people walking about or maybe there's nice paintings on the walls to look at or maybe there's a tree outside that you can look at every once in a while. But just as long as it's not so much that it overloads you. So, outside at the park on a sunny day is a nice stimulating but not distracting environment. Hanging out with your friends while they're watching a movie and playing video games would be a very distracting environment. Other thing I would recommend is that an active lifestyle is better than a sedentary one. Now, sedentary is basically sitting around. In fact, it comes from a Latin word that just means to sit. 
active lifestyle is probably what a lot of you athletes out there already know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm talking about playing soccer. I'm talking about, you know, taking a nice walk. I'm talking about swimming, water polo, diving, whatever it is you do. Now, am I saying that you, as somebody who's not an athlete, has to be a stellar athlete to do well in the test? No. But what I am saying is that you have to think of your brain as part of your body. And that as you do things that are more active, your brain will actually get smarter too. There's a tendency to think that, well, I'm a bookish person, so I don't need to worry about my physical health because my brain does everything. It's not really true. You gotta move around, you have to have some kind of exercise. This could be something as simple as walking around the block. Just don't make sure you're sitting down doing nothing all the time. 